everybody shall see my content very soon. So hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the beginner electrical engineer here, and today we're going to be doing a live stream about some circuit design elements. I should be going for about an hour, and hopefully you will enjoy it, or at least learn something. So this should be a more in-depth look at the um, Circuit Wizard program, which I shall put on the screen soon. But today, well, but first, I just need to get a drink, so please stand by, just like the image says. Thank you for watching. Um, if you'd like to say hi, then please comment. Uh, I'm not forcing you to by any means. But as I said previously, I've got my drink now and I'm pretty much ready to go. So let's set up Circuit Wizard as a separate scene. Scene 2. Okay, stay on scene 1 for a minute. There's no way to change. Circuit wizard. Okay. So let's uh, transform fit to screen. Can I get this any larger? There we go. And fit to screen again. So I will check the comments periodically in case anyone wanted to leave a question. Um, I'm more than happy to answer a question whether it's about Circuit Wizard or not, or about any other electrical engineering um, topic. I mean you can ask me personal questions as well but I might not answer you unfortunately because, well, personal. Also if you could let me know if you can hear me correctly, or you want me to turn up any volumes or anything, then that's absolutely fine as well. So let's get started with Circuit Wizard. So Circuit Wizard is a SPICE program. It's, I think it stands for Simulated Pro Simulation Program with Integrated Circuit Emphasis, SPICE. Now let's start by just having a look at some components. So as you can see, we've got our, our 1.5 volt cell, as you'd see from, say, a AAA battery. Well, it's a AAA cell, typically. Um, and we've got our grounds, and we've also got zero volts while they're the same and interchangeable. Sometimes, you know, you can use them differently. Sometimes I tend to go for the ground or the earth connection, and sometimes I tend to go for the zero volts. You've also got the voltage rail which you can change the value of. That is a very high voltage. It's actually only DC voltage. You can get an AC voltage source, which you can set the frequency and the RMS voltage value of. You could easily emulate mains voltages. In the UK, it's 230 volts at 50 hertz. And out of there would come said voltage at said frequency. And you could essentially measure it Now, I think I just realised the one person watching might just be me. Now let's have a look at some other... Oops, what am I thinking of? That's what I'm thinking of. Let's have a look at perhaps making something. Take a look at our voltage regulators. As you can see, we've got a whole bunch of them, but they're all linear regulators of the 7, 8, and 7, 9 series. Which is a bit unfortunate, you know, some of the other ones, like the 
is it LM4080, I think it is. Um, but these are all of the 1 amp and 100 milliamp versions. 100 milliamp versions are more likely to see on an Arduino, um, on an Arduino board, but actually I think they can withstand 500 milliamps. Yeah, doesn't matter. So let's take get rid of these and we'll just simply build a power supply using an AC voltage source of 230 volts, 50 hertz. I should have probably kept that from um, earlier. And we'll bring in a transformer which comes under inductors. on there. Actually no, we won't put a fuse on there. Because a fuse just makes things blow up when they don't need to because while this is supposed to be a simulation it's not an exact one-to-one -one comparison of it unfortunately. So let's take our diodes. We're going to need a few diodes for this. Now which way does it go? I think it's like that. do the same again. As you can see it's actually quite user friendly. I've noticed that some other programs like uh, Easy EDA isn't as user friendly. I haven't been able to get into that myself. But um, am I doing this correctly? I don't think I need that second half. Um, so what I've got here is essentially full bridge rectification. I'm just going to put a simple capacitor on there because there's no load. It shouldn't really matter whether it's connected or not. And same with this one. Now it's a 10 to 1 ratio transformer, so you should get, what's that, 23 volts out across the entire length of it. Something that must have been designed wrong here. So let me turn these around. See if that works. I honestly can't remember which way around these go for a center tapped transformer. Especially when the positive is flipped around on the circuit diagram for the transformer. Let's see if this works. Not so great. I'm not great at circuit design today. As you can see, I am very tired. But, God. You know, that's YouTube for you, I suppose. Can't sleep for the, no REM. No rest for the weary today. I need a quick drink again. Ugh. And just so I don't make this mistake a third time, I'm just going to give a quick center, center tapped full wave rectifier. how it works. Yeah, I remember now. So the, these can go away. Well, I'll use the capacitors in a little bit. Just delete all the wires. And I believe they're the wrong way around. So we don't need these diodes here. And this 
zero volts trails off. We are going to need a bridge rectifier, which the outputs go like that, or the inputs go like that, and the outputs go to the negative and positive. Um, what am I thinking of? Yeah, like on screen, basically. That should be working. As you can see, there's about 16 volts on the output and minus 16 volts on the input. Now that's good enough, I suppose, um, for a very simple rectifier. But I'm going to be. I'm going to put a 7815 if they've got one. They got one on it. Yeah, one five four fifteen amp regulator. So that's so that uh, that you can get the full negative voltage rectified for use with op amps, amplifiers in general, audio equipment, things that go into negative voltages. So let's move these capacitors a bit further down a little bit. 100 microfarads should be okay. Um, I do want to turn up this input voltage, so we'll have 12 windings to 1. Just quickly measure what the voltage bit is. Yeah, actually it's gone down, so let's decrease that to 9 windings to 1. We've got around 14 amps. 14. Let's put, oops. TE1. And let's put 10 back in, because why not? How come it reached 16 a while ago then? Ah, how strange. So let's put in 5 to 1, so I should have essentially doubled the voltage here. No? Oh, it does when I restart it. That makes sense, doesn't it? There is a few problems with... With uh, Circuit Wizard. So, yeah, about 20 volts and minus 20 volts. That should be fine. So we take our 7815 uh, seven, and we'll take the 7915 as well. Whoops. 7815. Now, linear, re linear regulators like this aren't the best. They'll get very hot if you draw more than an amp from them. Well, actually, if you draw at least 500 milliamps, they start to get warm. And they're not best for uh, precision power supplies either, but we're just going to roll with it today because we don't have any switch mode power supplies or some of the more precise um, linear rectifi uh, regulators as well. So you just hook up the reference voltages to your zero volts and your, I'm just going to flip this around, arrange, mirror, oops, so that the inputs are both on the same side and the outputs are both on the same side as well. And now if we grab ourselves some more capacitors, for this one I'm just going to use 2.2 uh, microfarads, nice value put them both together, connect the middle to the reference, and one to each output. We should be able to measure the, out the output voltage, and it should be... Uh, uh, I got the, volt the part numbers wrong. So, 7815 and 7915. 7915, there we go. And now we start it up, and we have pretty much 15 volts output there and we should have minus 15 volts output there. Now, it, there we go. As you can see there's a bit of wobble in the center of the reference voltages. There's not an awful lot we can do about that. I suppose um, we can have a quick look at the data sheet for the 
data sheet. I'll put this up really quickly on the screen in one second. Uh, scene three, let's create a scene. Sorry about it going black all of a sudden, but we'll put it up on any second now. Uh, Google Chrome, there we go. Okay, so you should be seeing the data sheet. We'll just go to the Fairchild Semiconductors um, data sheet for this. Just take a look at the insides when we can see a bit something other than a block diagram. If it'll even show us at all. Do do do. Come on. There we go. It's not going to load now, is it? Come on. Come on. But we can essentially use the diagrams here to create a constant, well, fixed current and you know, different regulations and all sorts of interesting things just by looking at the data sheet, especially with this adjustable regulator here. Now, as you can see with this one, which we might try and model today, we've got our power supply with a little op amp, which essentially acts as a buffer, well, voltage follower. Um, so you take your output voltage and you set it with a pot and then the LM417 gives the um, gives the pot a incredibly high impedance and outputs the same voltage, so that there's no crazy uh, crazy feedback caused by feeding the output voltage straight back into the adjustment voltage. And you can exa do exactly the same with the negative um, supply. As you can see here, this is what essentially what we've made with the 7815 and the 7915. We'll add adjustment regulators to that, or adjustments to that, in just a minute. And you can actually create switching regulators with it. Wouldn't recommend it, because it gets a bit expensive that way. Just buy them off eBay, and let's try and make the um, the oops, it's not working now. The adjustable output uh, regulator instead. So let's pause that. I'll stop that. Get rid of these output capacitors because they'll get in our way. Grab ourselves some up amps and flip them around. Same with these, because we're going to take some positive and negative voltage for our supply. Is that going to work? No, that's not going to work. I'm going to have to mirror, mirror that. And that's not what I meant by mirror, but whatever. We'll, uh, we'll do it the old-fashioned way. So we get about 20 volts here. So we'll go to our power supplies and get our positive voltage and put in 20. Copy and paste that. Flip it around and put a minus 20 in as well. So that's essentially hooked up to the power supply that we saw earlier, or the unregulated power supply, but it doesn't really matter. Whoops. We need this. Ah, I just thought I didn't switch the scene back to um, back to Circuit Wizard. So let me just cover what I've basically done. I essentially dragged in a voltage, uh, an op amp, and added the power supplies 20 volts and minus 20 volts, which is the same as the voltage on this wire. And this wire essentially unregulated, but it doesn't really matter for this example. Um, so next we need a resistor, or a potentiometer I should say. And we will, for, from now on, we'll just use a ground connection or an earth connection. Same thing really. I've just put one on there so that the 
um, computer knows that that is actually an Earth connection. I actually like Earth as a as a oops as a um, as a term in engineering. So I believe that was actually wrong. That should be this mirror that first. So that the positive one goes to the what it's reading from the uh, potentiometer. Oops. And the, the negative loops around to form a negative feedback loop, and the output goes to the reference voltage. And we essentially need to do the same with the um, negative rail as well. So we take our output from here. Now I'm not going to bother flipping everything around because it's just going to get messy that way. But it essentially works the same way. You'll be the um, integrated circuit reads a negative voltage here and outputs it back into the reference and we should get a nice smooth enough voltage out. So let's just put some capacitors on the output with some earths uh, just so we can get a good reading. Oops. There we go. And there we go as well. Oops. Uh, due to one or more simulation errors, maybe faults in the circuit. Um, let's try lowering the speed at which it uh, works things. Um, so we'll do one every one milliseconds. It'll probably, yeah, probably does the same thing again because it's trying to simulate too much. Let's get rid of back EMF. We don't want that. Hmm, well that's a bit awkward to say the least. Let's get rid of the negative for a start off. Simulate the positive voltage and it's not going to work. Of course not. So I'll just have to talk it through, through from now on. Um, but quickly just check the comments. And unfortunately it's still only me watching. Or is it just me? Is it me or is there anyone else? Um, um, yeah. Yeah. So, water, this really takes it out of me. All this constant talking is a bit annoying, but that's what you get for doing live streams, isn't it? Right, back to Circuit Wizard, because we know that's what, that's what you want to see. So let's start from the input, which is our main supply. Now, a good design philosophy if you're building mains powered things that are meant for commercial use, especially if it's going to be international, is to have a center tapped primary, i.e. a tap coming out of the center, so that you can either have your 230 volts come in to the, the top and bottom taps of the transformer, or if you've got the 110, I think it is, from the from US power supplies or from US mains, you connect it to the bottom and the center tap. In that, so that way you're essentially still getting the full uh, 300, 230 volts output, um, but only using half of the transformer. So it essentially compensates for the reduced voltage, and the rest of the circuit should still work fine as long as you have them in the right place. Obviously if you were to put 230 volts on the center tap and the bottom um, of the primary coil then you would essentially double the voltage on the rest of the circuit and most likely destroy everything that you've worked so hard to do. So when you're designing a circuit take, keep that in mind especially if it's supposed to be for cus customers to plug it in and run it themselves because they may make that mistake a lot. So transformer, very simple, 
takes your 230 volts, puts out about 20 RMS, well, above 20 at this point, but goes through the bridge rectifier, which reduces it by 1.7 volts peak to peak, due to having two diodes in series per cycle, or per half of the cycle. Um, and the center tap goes through ground, or goes, goes uh, is your reference voltage, in this case is your zero volts, so that one half of the secondary is always positive and the other half is negative. Obviously it's flipped here, but it doesn't really matter when when you're still dealing with AC because the voltages change into positive and negative anyway. So what I did here was just ground it mostly for the simulation's sake because it doesn't know that this bit is zero volts. It, it sees it as floating, so I put ground in there just to make sure that each time we use ground later on it is still referring to this zero volts here. Now you can actually ground your power supply like that in real life, I've done it before and it works fine. Um, just be aware that you can't flip the output stages over and essentially get negative voltages that way because it's reference to ground and you would essentially have another positive voltage and it just gets a bit messy so I wouldn't suggest um, flipping the output terminals around if you've earthed the supply. If you haven't earthed the the, uh, earthed the supply then that's perfectly fine and you should be able to flip them around like you would a battery. So we've essentially got just a few smoothing capacitors coming, uh, filtering the output of the bridge rectifier. Um, please note the orientation of these because these are electrolytic ones that are polarized with a positive and negative side. When you're, when you're smoothing out the positive voltage, not the positive side of your power supply, then the positive needs to go to the positive side of the capacitor needs to go to the positive voltage and the negative side of the capacitor goes to your reference voltage or your zero volts. But with the negative side, your positive goes to the reference voltage, your zero volts, and the negative side goes to your negative voltage. Now that's a little confusing, it, it confused me at first, but um, think of it as the, po the positive side always goes to the higher voltage of the two voltages including your zero volts, zero volts is technically still a voltage. Um, linear regulators, nice and simple, um, takes in your 20 volts, puts out clean 15, Ref that is when the reference voltage is connected to your zero or to your earth, um, but you should have a capacitive load right next to the um, linear regulator just to stabilize it a little bit. Um, it, it does actually say in the in data sheets that they need to be within a certain distance, normally about 20 centimeters, which is normally more than enough if you're making it on a PCB. Um, same goes with a negative. Again, just be aware of the capacitor orientation. That one is wrong. So I'll flip that around real quick. And there we go. Um, let's talk about the op amp and the adjustment potentiometer. So output voltage comes through here, goes through earth, you want a reasonably high value of your potentiometer to essentially increase the impedance and get more oomph out of your power supply. Because the, the more current that goes through here, the less can go through the rest of the circuit or the load that you're testing. Now the wiper of the potentiometer goes straight into a op-amp buffer, or voltage follower as it's also known, where there's a negative feedback loop without any resistors or added components um, that essentially duplicates the voltage here at this point here. And that's just fed back into the reference um, pin of the linear regulator so that the output changes in accordance to the position of the potentiometer. So bear in mind when powering your um, op amp that it should cover positive and negative voltages if you've got a dual supply like we're designing here. If you're de designing a single supply then 
by all means just use zero volts and your upper unregulated voltage here. Um, same with the negative side. This, this essentially works all the same just with negative voltages, hence why you need the negative um, the negative power supply on your op amp, else you'll end up with a uh, you'll end up with a saturated op amp, and that's something that you don't want. Now your output is essentially here. I'd still have the um, capacitor there just to smooth it out. In if I was drawing this properly, I would have put it closer to the seven eight fifteen or the and the 7915, both the linear regulators, just to um, emphasize that closeness between the capacitor and the regulator again. Now what I'd also suggest doing is getting some big diodes. If you're in England, I'd use the 74001, I think. Yeah, 740124 or 4 just for the amps, i.e. 1 amp, 2 amp, 3 amp, 4 amp. But I would go 7017, oh, wait, 7? 1N4001 diodes. If you're America, you, in America, you can find equivalent diodes quite easily. Um, and you essentially just connect them in reverse bias so that if there's any voltage spike, say from an inductive load, um, your devices or your circuitry should all be protected as uh, any back EMF just gets well handled nicely let's say from the diodes that you've put in reverse bias so uh, that's essentially it for a power supply um, Please be aware that if you try and build one like this, that this whole transformer setup at the start you will have to build yourself, which means finding a transformer from somewhere that is centre tapped on the secondary with um, a high enough output voltage around about 22-ish volts um, on the secondary side. Now that can be a bit of a challenge. and I've yet to find one, but I haven't really been looking. You could essentially try and make one yourself, but transformers can be a bit difficult to make, especially with that volt, that um, that ratio there, and the center tap as well. The center tap can make things a bit more ugly. Um, another thing to bear in mind is the power of um, the power supply is determined by the uh, transformer, the amount of turns per um, stage or per side of the transformer indicates the maximum current it can handle, same with the thickness of the wire. Um, the bridge rectifier is also another point of failure. You, you don't want to use tiny little diodes if you're going to be drawing more than an amp. Well, more than their rated current maximum. Uh, capacitors are typically fine, just beware of the voltages. Um, the regulators again, especially if you're using linear regulators, be aware of the maximum current output and the maximum junction temperature, so you will need heat sinks on them, which I don't have a symbol for. Um, and other than that, just be very careful about your component choices, but you should, should still be doing fine. Um, yeah. There's not much else to it. Just keep it nice and simple, nice and neat. Output positive and output, out, output negative. So Unfortunately, Circuit Wizard didn't do a very good job at simulating this today. I mean, it does a great job with digital components, not so much with analog like most of this is here. Um, but I have been able to do essentially giant digital um, 
digital logic circuits using all of these gates. Now, let's see if I can find some, show you the list. So let's take the 7400 series, and as you can see, there is essentially a lot of them. It doesn't have the full 7400 series here, but it's got most of the ones that you'll ever need for a hobbyist or a beginner engineer like myself, hence the name. Um, same with the 4000 series, I actually prefer the 4000 MOSFET series, or the FET series. But, um, <coughs> that's just me I suppose. Uh, it does have a few other integrated circuits, 555 and 556, which is a dual version of the 555. I have a few of those in real life as well. Drivers, you got your Darlington Array, your half H driver for driving motors. That's actually the L293D. I, th I don't know if there's any equivalence to that. You c you've got your um, LM3914 and the logarithmic and decibel versions as well. Um, but I, in the simulation, I prefer to use op amps purely because, well, this chip is a bit convoluted due to it being kind of specialist. Um, you do get memory devices like EEPROM with, uh, I, I believe it might be four wire interface. Yeah, because you've got your address select. It's actually not four wire interface, but. Uh, there is some microcontroller bits on here, I believe. There's uh, not in this, not in these settings, but there is a genie, I think. Hence why there's a whole program bit here. When genie's kind of like uh, Arduino, but worse in my opinion. I mean, I've tried pick programming. I've used um, oh, what was it called? Mpasm, which was a bare bones um, assembly language, not like C at all. Um, it was actually a lot more forgiving than C is, but there was a lot of limitations with it and you had to know exactly what you were doing else you wouldn't really get anything to work. Um, Genie kind of simplifies that, I believe it's a bit closer to C, similar to an Arduino, or Arduino's variant of C but I've, I've never used it and I wouldn't recommend using it either especially since it's PIC and what well, well PIC do rival the Atmega microcontrollers pretty well they aren't really good enough to uh, to overcome the benefits of using an Arduino no. um, let's take a look yeah you've got your generic dual inline uh, chips here, so in case you wanted to make something that had four pins but you didn't have the exact one here, then you could at least put it in your circuit, label it up, connect all the connections as you would uh, any other chip, and essentially save it this way. Now as far as I'm aware there's no export feature, I mean there is a print but you need to set up printers and things, and truth be told that doesn't work all too well. Um, so what I tend to do is just print screen it and save it that way as a JPEG, PNG, that kind of thing. Um, on my Twitter I've also done something very similar, but there are loads of options for um, simulation like explosions bounce, as in switch bounce. Slow motion, I have never used that myself, and back EMF, which is when you stop a motor and the voltage spikes up because of the inductance of each coil. And as you can see, there's varieties of motors, relays as well, which actually work. Um, but most of the time, this is for low current um, applications. You can't really design anything high current, or well, you can design high precision, I suppose. Um, Tolerances aren't here, so to speak. Um, as in, if you say something is 10k, then it is exactly 10k. Um, other than that, I'd say Circuit Wizard is pretty good. Uh, it does everything I need to do. There are some audio things, um, but. 
I don't want to deafen myself because they are kind of loud. Obviously, you could turn it down, but I ain't one for that. But yeah, everything does work. It's emulated pretty well. Well, simulated, I suppose. It's not emulated. <laughs> um, and I often use this for prototyping uh, before I go on and actually do anything. Uh, you've got your MOSFETs, your JFETs, and your MPNs, PMPs, diodes, scene diodes, thyristors, thyristors, bridge rectifiers. It doesn't have every single thing. There's a few interesting things in sensors, like ultrasonic rangefinders and phototransistors, optoisolators. They all do work um, with their correct outputs. I have no clue what I button is. I suppose that's where you press and hold it, but no used it. You can do use crystals and real time clocks and things. Um, as you can see, there's I squared C um, interfaces here, which is cool, but they'd only really work with uh, with your microcontroller, which you can't really implement here. Um, It's only half past ten. And you can get, you know, all your connectors that you'd ever need. Plenty of different types of switches. Unfortunately, there's no rotary switch, but there is keypads, which is nice and uh, useful, I suppose. Let's get rid of that. Read switches as well. And you can label, you can even draw on top. Your, oops. Draw on top yourself um, using some of the other tools like I believe it's under draw and you can draw lines, rectangles, circles, arcs, all of that. All of that nice goodness. But again, I'd rather just use paint or any other tool like that because they have a bit more flexibility. And I think I need a nap. Blimey. And yeah, there are a few other options that like you can design said circuits on PCB with, or even on a breadboard. And you can connect all the pins together and all of that, but I never use that myself. Let's get rid of that. Delete. Um, but you can get all your components, all your inline sockets. Capacitors, uh, NPNs, 4000 series, all of the goodies. You could even get li different LED sizes, and they are literally different sizes. Like the 3mm ones are actually smaller than the 5mm ones, and they indicate the flat edge as well that you need. Um, I don't believe there's an option to buy these circuits boards that you design, but I believe you might be able to export them somehow. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, I've never tried it myself. Uh, I normally rely on easy EDA for that, but again, I'm no good at that. You can also use program uh, flowcharts for Genie, and you can do some ups of LEDs and all your components based on the PCB layout. Um, but that goes into changing all of these values, and I'd rather just do it on a spreadsheet again. Because, well, it's easier, you know? So, ladies gentlemen and everyone else. I might call it here today. We've been going for a good 45 minutes now and I've certainly enjoyed my time telling you how to do this and since it's only me who watched the live stream I'm going to edit this and make a video of it myself. So thank you for watching ladies and gentlemen. It's the beginner electrical engineer here. I hope you learned something useful today, 
and I shall see you in the next video or live stream. Goodbye!